What's going on everybody? My name is Dwayne and welcome to this week's episode of Developing Apex Brands. What's going on everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of Developing Apex Brands here with your boy Dwayne coming to you live from the edit bay. So on this week's episode, we're going to be talking about tutorials specifically within Photoshop. We're going to be talking about functionality and navigation with inside the uh, software. So let's go ahead and hop into the software. So the first thing you're going to see when you open the Photoshop software is you're going to see the start menu here. It's going to show you your new file where you can create a new file. It's going to show you open where you can open any existing files that you already have on your computer or any external hard drives, as well as any recent projects that you've most recently opened, as you can see here with some of the projects and things that I've recently worked on. So for the interest of the tutorial, let's go ahead and start a new file. When you start a new file, you're gonna see your new documents window. It's gonna have different um, options here for you to choose. Here's what your project is gonna be named. You're gonna have the width and height of your project workspace area. You can change what dimension is being based off of. Typically within digital space, you're going to be using pixels. However, um, if I'm working on like print uh, work for maybe flyers or business cards, something like that, and I need a specific dimension, I may choose inches as a way to get a pinpoint specific, you know, length that I need for my project. Um, you also have your resolution. Uh, resolution typically is going to be set to 300, although in some small instances I may go up to 350, um, but the best thing would be to stay here at the 300 pixels per inch. Um, you can also manipulate your color environment and other information down here, um, but typically um, we'll only be working with these, you know, first um, two options here. So typically, you know, Instagram is going to be a 1080 by 1080 frame environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose 1080 by 1080 pixels and create a new document. Now, as you can see, we've created our first uh, new document here within Photoshop. As you can see, this is gonna be your workspace area. So you can see what you're working on. Here is going to be your toolbar. So you can see all of the different tools that you can use inside of Adobe uh, Photoshop. Here is your layers tab. So this is going to be any layers that you put into your project. They're going to be shown here. And then you can also see other subsets and tabs um, aligned throughout this area as well for things that you can work on. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab a uh, file and bring it in to the environment. There's two ways that you can do this. You can either right click your file and bring it into Photoshop this way. So that way it creates its own, you know, PNG layer or whatever um, file type you had, or you can go to your original project and drag and drop your file into your, um, your file area. So what you can see here is now we have our file that we just dragged in selected inside of our 1080 by 1080 square. Uh, what you can do is depending on where you grab any of these square dots here, if you drag it, it's going to proportionally make it bigger or smaller in the direction that you're pulling. So if I pull this left dot, it'll grow it to the left. If I pull this uh, top right corner, it's going to grow it to the top right. Also, if you hold shift while dragging, it will only stretch in the direction that you're pulling. So right now I'm holding shift on my keyboard. If I drag it to the right, as you can see, it unproportionately drags only that corner that I pulled. Same thing if you were to do that with another side as well. All right. So I don't want to save that because it became unproportional. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and redrag this back in and then I'll go ahead and drag our edges to the end and make sure they snap and align and we'll go ahead and save that into the environment. Now, what you'll wanna be able to do is, if you push V on your keyboard or choose your move tool, this will give you the ability to move your object or your layer 
with inside of the work environment. So what I did was I want to go ahead and drag this down just to make sure that I'm covering everything and I can see my entire body here proportionally. All right. Now, let me state here. Anytime you drag a file in from your file folder into here, it's going to save it as a smart object. In order for you to fully manipulate that smart object, you're going to want to rasterize that layer. So anytime, if you want to be able to tell, if you can see this little small gray box here, that lets you know that it is a smart object. So we'll right click this, rasterize our layer. And now we have a fully manipulatable flat layer here that we can use. All right, so let's get into our tools. So the first tool we're going to be able to use is our move tool. As you can see, the move tool, essentially whatever layer you have selected, it will give you the ability to move that in and around your canvas. OK, pretty simple. Our second tool here is going to be our rectangular marquee tool. The keyboard shortcut for that is going to be M. So if I push M on my keyboard or select the tab, this will give me the ability to select things with inside my environment. So our second option, our marquee tool or our rectangle tool, if we drag it across here, anything that's going to be inside this rectangle, we can copy it, we can drag it, we can do a lot of different things with it. So if I push V and drag inside here, as you can see, it will cut anything inside of that out. If I press Command Z, that'll bring it back. I can also copy what's inside of this box as well to another layer. If I push Command J for copy. And as you can see, it created this new layer one here. If I were to uh, make this invisible by clicking this eye, as you can see, what was in that box is now created on layer one. So we'll go back. Perfect. So now we have our lasso tool and these next few options that we're going to be getting into are mostly for selecting uh, subjects with inside your photo. Um, there are a lot of different options, but I'm going to be showing you all of the different ways that you can do it. And then um, as you get better into the software, you'll be able to see, you know, which options are better for which situation. So the first selection we have here is our lasso tool. Our lasso tool gives us the ability to free select whatever we want that's inside of the circle that we create or the object that we create. So I want to select myself as the subject. So I'm going to start here and drag my uh, cursor all the way around until I get back to that first dot. And as you can see, it's created these marching ants around my body. All right. So that's a way that you can select a subject roughly. If you want to get rid of marching ants or to de deselect anything that's on your um, computer screen, you can push Command D. And as you can see, it will get rid of those marching ants. Um, also, if you look and hold your uh, icons, you'll be able to see more options. If you see a small, great, uh, you know, tab in the middle or at the bottom right hand corner of your object. So there's different lasso tools that you can use. Uh, the polygon will give you the ability to do straight lines. So instead of having free form, it will create straight lines for you. These are good for like buildings or landscapes, um, you know, and, and you have a lot of straight lines or 90 degree angles where you can, you know, do that to help you cut out different things. And as you can see, again, we have an outline that we're able to cut and we could remove this from our background. We're going to go ahead and press Command D again. Also, last but not least, there is a mag magnetic lasso tool. Uh, the machine learning will learn and can see the contrasted outline around my body and it will do its best to stay as close to this outline, um, you know, to, to cut this object out. So I'm just going to start here at the, uh, the, uh, the shoulder area and click and I'm just going to follow my my head as closely as possible around the edge. I'm not clicking anything. I'm just following and dragging my mouse. And uh, try to do this as quickly as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect. But as you can see, it's, it's pretty much keeping as close as possible to the outline. And now as you can see, it's very, very close 
around the edges. One cool thing um, I'll show you guys on the next one. Uh, if you actually push Q on your uh, keyboard, it will show red. And what that does is basically show you the contrast between what you selected and what wasn't selected. So if I choose my brush, which is down here, and we'll come back to this a little bit later, but if we click our brush, if you see down here in the uh, bottom of your toolbar, you'll see a black and a white. You can always reset it by clicking this button here, but you'll see black and white. When you have your brush selected in this mode after pressing Q, if it's black, you'll be able to add more red or essentially subtract less from your subject and if you feel like you've done too much you can also switch over to your white by clicking this toggle button or by pressing x on your keyboard and then you can go back to that section and try to get rid of any excess that might be there perfect and once you're satisfied you can push q on your keyboard again and now it will refine your edge a little bit more. Our next option for uh, choosing outlines, and I'm gonna go ahead and press Command D again to get rid of our marching ants. Another option that we can choose is our uh, object selection tool. So we're gonna start here, and the shortcut for that is gonna be W. So if you push W on your keyboard, it will select that icon. The cool thing about this, uh, Tool, uh, which didn't exist not too long ago. This has, you know, been within some of the most recent year updates. It will actually select the subject that you uh, grab and put this uh, box around. So I'm going to start up here. And actually, you can do one of two ways. You can actually drag around or you can click on your subject because it's going to show um, where the outline is going to be based in blue. So if I want, I can just go ahead and click my object and it's loading and now if you can see the marching ants are around and just to confirm just so you can see I'll press Q and now you can see where the outline is around my subject way way better way easier so again you know for everybody um, there's different ways to do it but you know certain ways work better than others all right Another option that you can choose is your quick selection tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and command D to get rid of my marching ants. So your quick selection tool, uh, it allows for you to select what's inside of your subject to create your outline from within. So you definitely wanna start here and make sure that you have your plus sign chosen. If you want, you can make this bigger or smaller by choosing your brackets. It's gonna be the two buttons to the right of the P on your keyboard. The one on your left makes your uh, brush smaller. The one on the right makes your brush bigger. So once you have the size brush that you want and you make sure that you have the positive uh, plus sign chosen on your brush, you can continue to go ahead and drag inside your subject. And as you can see, it's pretty good at selecting the outline. And now you can see that it's gone to the outside of your subject. And again, if you push Q on your keyboard, there's different things that you can go ahead and, and try to you know select them and add them in, but it gets the outline and pretty much the gist of what you're trying to get, right? We'll push Q on the keyboard again, Command D to get rid of our marching ants. We also have our magic wand tool. Uh, the magic wand tool tends to work a lot better for um, images that have one solid color. Um, but I'll just show you kind of what it looks like here. So I'll take my magic wand tool, click on it. And as you can see, whatever I'm clicking on, that layer is going to select it and put an outline around it. So again, there's a whole lot of different techniques for you to be able to select outlines. Um, you know, each one has, you know, different scenarios where it's going to work better than others but these are just, you know, basic selection tools. So I, you know, here, here's the gist of it. I don't want to continue to keep clicking, but you can see that it's trying its best to select the outline. I'll go ahead and hit Command D. And perfect, so now that's our magic wand tool. One other option we have as well is while we have our layer selected, we can go to our properties 
scroll down and now you can see where it says select subject if we click select subject this will also select our subject super duper easy uh, this tends to be the easiest way i wanted to show you guys all the other ones though just so you know exactly how you can select subjects as well and again if i push q on my keyboard you can see the outline where that is everything looks crispy all right so we'll go ahead and press command d our next icon our next tool that we can use is our crop tool the crap tool, um, the keyboard shortcut for that is C. So if you push C on your keyboard, that will bring up your crop tool. Essentially what your crop tool does is essentially crop. So you can make your you know image smaller. Um, you can you know change the dimension of your project if need be. Let's say there might be something in the background that's kind of getting on my nerves. That's like right up here in this top left corner. You know, I can just go ahead and drag this over, get rid of it. And now I can try to make this more proportional and still keep out what I need and have a perfect picture. All right. So crop is pretty uh, self-explanatory. We have our frame tool. Our frame tool gives us the ability to put uh, a frame basically on our uh, object and then add a photo into it. So let's say I just wanted to add a random photo here in the middle. I'm gonna drag and make a rectangle here. Now what I can do is I can take another photo, drag it into my rectangle. And as you can see, I can drag the photo that I just brought into my uh, Photoshop environment inside of that rectangle, independently of what's happening to my other photo. All right. Another tool that's very important is gonna be your eyedropper tool. This is gonna be able to select different color palettes, you know, be able to select, uh, to see exactly what colors on your screen. So what I'll do is I'll show you guys, if I select right here, you can see this half circle. The color on the bottom is gonna be the last color that you selected. And then the color on the top is gonna to be the one that you're currently hovering over. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of different greens here. And as you can see, if I hover over the white, it turns white. If I cover over my, you know, my beard, it goes black. If I hover over my skin, it turns brown. So the eyedropper essentially just gives you the ability to pick the color specifically of whatever you're looking at. So it can help you do a uh, good color matching and color grading. Another cool option or feature here is your spot healing brush. So this is going to give you the ability to remove blemishes or things that might not be wanted on your photo. So trying to see if I can find something on here that might be considered a blemish. So spot healing is supposed to mimic the environment around it. So even though these uh, little ticks right here, they're on purpose. If I click on here, Photoshop is going to assume that I want this to be white. So I could get rid of all these little tick marks if I wanted to by using the spot healing brush because it's using the pixels around it to heal and look as seamless and blend with the environment around it. So as you can see, there was a whole bunch of tick marks there and now they're gone from using the spot healing bus. And I can show you guys if I press uh, command Z to go back. Now you can see all these tick marks coming back onto the palette. All right. Next, we have our brush tool. There's a couple of different cool things that you can do with your brush tool, and I'll show you guys um, what you can do. Um, the basic functionality that you can use it for is to paint. So as you can see, I can make uh, paint marks there. Uh, if you go up into your brush section here, there's different presets for different types of brushes. So um, typically the two that I use the most are gonna be hard round, and you have your soft round here. As you can see the difference here, um, the last one was very definitive where this one has a more fuzzy edge. Um, one of the cool things that I'll show you that I do a lot here with um, the brush, I'm going to go ahead to my properties. I'm going to select my subject and I'm going to go back to my layer and I'm going to press command J to make a copy. And now I have a copy directly of just myself on the top and as you can see there's a, a 
opaque background there's nothing there so I've removed myself from the background so here's a cool thing that I like to do I press command and select my top layer so now as you can see my top layer is selected and you can see the marching ants um, for those who are you know good with seeing it I'll press these uh, Q and now you can see again the outline so I've been completely outlined one cool thing with your brush come down here create a new mask and now in your mask area you can erase and add things without getting rid of your original photo so what I'll do is I'll make my brush a little bit bigger and make sure that I chose a soft round brush and now when I brush as you can see it's creating a like a faded gradient on the bottom here and these are just some cool things that you can do with brushes right it's a whole lot of other things um, this is one of the things that I use it the most for because um, I think it you know it has the most practicality and it has the best functionality um, for what I do um, but yeah there's a lot of things that you can do with brushes here so I'm gonna go ahead and get those back here perfect and now we're back here all right and here we have our clone stamp tool our clone stamp tool gives us the ability to take one portion of our photo or object and essentially mark it elsewhere on the photo as well so I'll show you exactly what I mean so I'm gonna zoom in here and just like our first example with our uh, spot healing brush what I'll do is I'll press option choose a section down here that I actually want to clone so this is the area that I want to clone over top of these dots because I want to get these dots out of here so I'm gonna go ahead and clone this section here by clicking now let go of option and as you can see when I hover over top of these dots they're disappearing it'll show me what it looks like so I'll go ahead and click and when I click as you can see everything that I'm drawing is going to be replicated where that little plus sign is so now I can keep going and get rid of this area here and if you you know mess up a little bit or, or you know it's getting off you can choose another area by holding option clicking another area and now you can go back over and get rid of your dots again as you can see we zoom out those dots are now gone our next tool is going to be our eraser tool our eraser tool does just that it gives us the ability to erase uh, whatever layer we have selected now there's two ways of uh, erasing a layer um, the first one that I'm going to do I wouldn't suggest because it's going to be a actual permanent deleting of whatever you're erasing so you can't get it back as once you work farther into your project um, but just select your erase tool and again our um, short or keyboard shortcut is going to be E so if we push E on our keyboard if I select the layer that I want to uh, get rid of all I got to do is click my key or my mouse and drag and as you can see it got rid of my arm now if I work further along and I want to recover that let's say you know hey I didn't want to get rid of that if I do it this way it's permanently deleted well if I want to get that back a good way to do that is go down here create a mask by clicking this button here so you're going to want to go down here and make sure that you have your white color selected but once the white color is selected if you delete and drag that will delete right but if you say we work farther in and i decide well you know i want to get that arm back all i have to do is toggle back to my black layer and then drag over my arm and now i can restore my arm another important tool that we're going to be working with is going to be our paint bucket tool our paint bucket tool gives us the ability to uh you know paint large portions of our uh project file so i'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer by clicking this new layer button down here in the bottom next to our trash can it's going to create another layer two here if i push my paint bucket tool and the keyboard shortcut for that is going to be g so if you hit your icon or g on your keyboard it will pull up your uh, paint bucket tool whatever color you select is whatever 
color the paint bucket is going to put there. Since I have nothing selected, it's going to paint the entire environment. So if I click my keyboard or kick my mouse, as you can see, everything in yellow is the entire screen because nothing had been selected with inside my screen. Now, I'll go ahead and remove that. If I wanted to make a certain selection just based on, you know, my person here, what I could do is I can go to my uh, my image layer, hold command and click my image. Now I'm outlined. If I go back to my layer and then click inside of my image. Now, as you can see, the only thing that's been selected is the yellow. You can get rid of your marching ants by command D. And now you have an outline all in one color based on your paint brush tool or your paint bucket tool. Also inside of your uh, paint bucket area, you have your gradient tool. The gradient tool comes in handy when you wanna make nice uh, gradients. So what I'll do is I'll show you guys, if you uh, go up to this top menu here, you'll have different colors that you can use. Um, since I have on a uh, camouflage shirt, I'm gonna choose some green gradients. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and grab uh, this gradient here and if I drag from outside into this area I'm sorry I forgot to deselect I grab outside this area and come in now you can see that gradient and if I want it I could pull this under and then you can see you can make all different types bring it from different areas You can also start from the inside and give yourself a nice burst. So the gradient tool is really cool. Um, you know, gives you some, you know, pop to your photos as well. All right, I'm gonna go back. Another important tool that you'll be using inside Adobe Photoshop is going to be the pen tool. Uh, this is probably one of the tools that I use the most when I'm inside of Photoshop, if I'm doing, um, you know, vector graphic arts. So uh, in order to pick the pen tool, you can either click the icon or push shortcut P on your keyboard. What this will give you the ability to do is to outline trace subjects as well. Um, I tend to do this for vector graphics. Now with um, selecting a subject, you're not gonna get a hard line around it. Um, it will select the outline of your subject, but it's not gonna give you that crispy line that you want um, as far as like if you're trying to outline something. So the best thing I do is to you know choose my pen tool so pen tool you can click and what i tend to do is if i want curves i'll click on my icon drag and as you can see it pulls out this line with this circle here and now if i click here to a second option i'm going to get that curve based on that line now up here you can see you have your fill and your stroke your stroke is going to be your outline color. Your fill is going to be your inside color. I typically get rid of my fill color. And as you can see, we have this black line. And if you hold command and grab this dot, this will give you the ability to move and manipulate your line. So as you can see, you can, you know, outline things if you take your time and you can create full outlines and full vector graphics based on your pen tool. Another important tool that you're gonna be using is going to be the text tool. So the text tool, uh, you can either click the icon or the keyboard shortcut for that is going to be T. I'll hit T on my keyboard. And then as you can see, um, it'll give you different options here. So this is gonna be your font type. This is going to be, um, if you have any variation of it, whether you have a regular font, a bold font, italic, uh, that may be there. This is going to be the size of your font, uh, the orientation, and then the color of your font. So I'm going to go ahead and make my font white since I'm going to put it on the person and the subject. So when you're ready, go ahead and click. And as you can see, you can drag it. You can change the size of your, your text. You can change the 
font of your text and you can change the orientation if you have multiple lines. If you want to, if you're ready to save it, you go ahead and click the check mark. And as you can see, we have some text here that I can move and manipulate within space. Last but not least, we have our hand tool and our magnifying glass tool, both of which are at the bottom. Um, our shortcuts for those for our hand tool is going to be H and for our zoom tool is going to be Z. I'll go ahead and select the hand tool. The hand tool just gives us the ability to pan around inside of our environment. So unlike our selection or our move tool, move tool will actually move the layer that you have selected, but our hand tool gives us the ability to move and pan around our environment. Typically people use this if they don't have a mouse or a uh, trackpad uh, for all of us uh, Apple Mac users or um, those out there with a mouse, you can either use your scroll wheel or you can you know, pinch in and out you know, to have a zoom or to move around in your environment. But for those who may be using only a mouse or don't have that capability, then you may need to use your hand and your zoom tool. And your zoom tool as well, super simple. If you push Z on your keyboard or choose your icon, if you scroll up, it'll go out. If you scroll down, it'll go in. All right, and there you have it. The basic functionality of Photoshop, how to navigate, what the tools are used for, and how you can use those tools to make the best project that you can. I know this was just a beginner tutorial, but if you do know how to use these tools and hone those skills, over time, you'll be able to create better and better projects that you'll be able to create for yourself and also for your client base. If you like this video and would like to see more content come from the Dab Media page, please make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button to follow us and for our future videos, make sure you turn on that bell for notifications. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any ideas for any future videos you would like for me to put out, please make sure that you comment those below in the comment section. I appreciate you guys coming to this week's episode of Developing Apex Brands.